Hello everyone, I am done with night shift and I am back home where I can get some stuff done. So it has been, uh, I think I ended up working like 16 or 17 days in a row and I am way behind out here. I've got a ton of stuff that I need to get done and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to see if I can start getting caught up and I'm going to start where I'm probably the place that needs the most attention and that is going to be our meat chickens. So our meat chickens have not got moved out to a tractor. In fact, it was like 32 degrees, 33 degrees last night. And we have been raising them solely in the barn back here. So um, I need to get their pen cleaned out and check on them. We have had a few die um, and we're down a, a few birds. So I've had people comment that we need to maybe only feed them 12 hours out of the day and 12 hours without feed. The problem is, I don't know if I have my feeders that I have, I've had to even put a bowl in there just to give them more uh, area to access feed. The feeder that I made was not long enough to fit all the chickens once they got all nice and fat and plump. So I um, need to try to make another feeder today. Uh, we're gonna get the their pen, the brooder, get it all cleaned out. And then we're gonna weigh our chickens and we're gonna try to estimate how old they are because when we bought them from the farm store, we're kind of estimating that they were somewhere close to two weeks old. And uh, so if we weigh them, we ought to get a good estimate on where they are in their growth cycle and estimate exactly how old they are, how many more weeks I have to go. Because I think right now I've only got like another bag of feed um, left. So I knew that I probably have to at least purchase one to two more bags. So we'll get a good estimate on how much longer I need to go and see if I need to buy another bag of feed. But anyway, we're going to head back there to the, uh, to the livestock barn and check on the meat chickens. So before we get back there to the barn, let me show you the orchard real quick. Look at this. This is one of our plum trees. Um, I can't remember if this is an Ozark Premier or if this is a Santa Rosa. I can't remember. But anyway, this is one of our original plum trees. And it always blooms out like this. I mean, look at how many blooms are on this. But yet, last year, we got our first fruit. We had one. So we've never really got fruit off of this. Um, it usually frosts sometime after they bloom. So I wonder if that's the reason. But... So far, not too much luck on getting plums. We've got fruit from about everything else. And this is the other plum tree. And this is the one we replaced last year. Um, you can see it does have some blooms on it. This, the last one died. The last one on this died because of, it was like a diseased tree. It never looked good and it took a few years for it to completely die off. Um, hopefully we got a healthy one this time. This is, this is the peach, one of our peach trees. This is our red peach, um, New Haven red peach. I don't know if you can tell. Let me get a little closer. So it, they, that's the second thing to bloom out here. And they put on these little red, um, you know, flowers, little pink flowers. And they have them all over them. They're just getting started uh, to bloom. So peaches are next, plums are first. After that, we should start having some apples come after that. So everything in the orchard has got buds on it. You know, it's getting really close to all these flowers coming out. So um, everything's starting to look cool. I have to show you the tree in the front. We've got a tree in the front that is just amazing. This peach tree's probably got the most blooms on it. Already opened up. But uh, yeah, the orchard is starting to wake up. Hello everyone. The baby goats are doing good. We have been too busy to really try to get these things sold. Um, Rebecca is pretty much working quite a bit, being a nurse right now. And um, so we just have only had enough time Oh, come on, guys. Uh, we have only had enough time to be able to uh, do the chores and go to work. So not much extra time to get anything done. Let's go inside and look at the chickens.
So here's our meat chickens. You can see we've got one heat lamp left. We've got it elevated up a little bit. And about half the birds like to still stay under there. So my problem is, is this feeder that I made ain't long enough. You can see how fat that bird is. And he takes up quite a bit of space. So they won't all fit at that feeder. So I just ended up putting a bowl in here to help them, give them more space to eat. No, Gracie. No, Gracie. Oh, I left the door open. Hold on. Gracie, come on. Crazy goat. Get out of there. You can't have, co you can't have chicken feed. You need a collar. All right, now that I got Grace, Gracie out, where was I? So, yeah, I gave them an extra bowl to be able to eat at so they could all fit at the feeders. Um, one other thing I changed since I've been here is I did drill a hole in the bucket lid here for the water. So when you hang that from the hydrant, um, it'll pour water directly in the bucket. And I don't have to take the lid off. So anyway, first thing I want to do before we weigh a couple of these chickens, I'm going to go ahead and clean all the wood chips out of here, and then we'll... Go ahead and spread more, uh, this is pine shavings. We'll spread more pine shavings on the ground. So I've cleaned this thing out several times, Come on. and uh, it's pretty nasty keeping them in the barn. But still rather cold outside, and uh, I haven't had time to build a chicken tractor anyway. So. Okay, we've got the uh, we've got the brooder completely cleaned out, all fresh wood chips. So while I was working, I didn't I wasn't able to clean this as well as I probably should. Um, I did clean it out a few times, but never a complete clean out like we did today. So I know some people are probably going to say that's probably one reason why um, I ended up losing a couple chickens because I didn't keep the area clean, and that may be true. But I know with these chickens. They always say that you will lose a couple because they kind of tend to overeat themselves and just kind of the way, the nature of the beast. You always probably end up losing a couple birds. At least that's what, it dep probably depends which hatchery you use too. So I'm not really sure what hatchery these came from. So anyway, tonight I'll probably go ahead and take away the heat lamp, get rid of it, and give them one night without, the first night without heat and I'll probably take their feed away at night as well and start for sure doing the 12 hours of feed and 12 hours off. So I don't know how well you can tell. There is a variance in size. Some are bigger than others. So let's get the scale out and we'll go ahead and weigh these guys up and kind of see what the average weight is to estimate their age. All right. Your first step, buddy. You just stay still. Five pounds, about three ounces, two ounces. Pretty good. Over five pounds. Let's see what you are. About the same, about five pounds, two ounces, somewhere in there. Alright, you look smaller. Let's see if you're smaller. Just under five pounds. There you go. And you look pretty small. Come here. You look small. I'll try to get some small ones. Oh yeah, you're only about a little over four pounds. You're a little behind. You're about four and a half pounds. So, so you're about the average size. So we're about four and a half pounds on average, I'd say. 
So I just looked it up on my phone and I looked at kind of a growth chart for a Cornish cross chicken. And based on their average weight, they're probably around five weeks old. And you normally raise these to somewhere between six and eight weeks old. So I'll probably, you know, go another two to three weeks raising these, these chickens in here. So I definitely need one more bag of feed for sure. Um, and then I'll probably, I may end up buying two bags of feed. But having two to three weeks left, um, that's too long, I think, to leave these chickens in the barn. So I'll probably go ahead, I'll build a chicken tractor here soon. And then we'll get them out here in the pasture, right here behind the barnyard. Man, it is green, isn't it? I mean, everything is turning into spring. We've got some nice tall grass back there. Um, we'll get the, the chickens in a tractor here in a few days. Um, so I'm going to take the heat lamp away tonight. Let them get acclimated to the temperature in the barn. So the barn stays 5 to 10 degrees warmer than it is outside. We'll let them get used to the barn temperature and then we'll transfer them outside uh, into the tractor. Hopefully it doesn't get too cold for them. And uh, they'll be in a lot better condition out here on fresh grass every day instead of being in that barn sitting on top of all those pine chips and all of their droppings, you know. So um, not the ideal condition leaving them in there that long in the barn, but uh, working 16 days in a row, working 12 hour shifts, um, didn't have much choice but to kind of just clean it out as I could. So I wanted to show you guys our magnolia tree at the front of the property. This thing is in bloom, just coming out in bloom over the last few days. And this magnolia tree is just, it only looks like this for a couple weeks, a year, and it just looks pretty cool. This is a pretty old magnolia tree, nice good size. And uh, just thought it looked pretty cool. I mean, this is when you know spring is coming. And you see this tree all bloomed out like this. You know spring is here. So that makes me happy. I am ready to be outside and just enjoying our property. So doesn't that magnolia tree look pretty cool? Yeah, spring is here. So up here we got... You know, we got our boy goats up here. That's where this magnolia tree is right next to where the boy goats are. They're, they're being lazy and laying down. And we have not had a chance to put up any permanent fencing in this electric netting. This is Premier One poultry netting. This is made for chickens. And we've had this up all winter long. And it has kept the predators out. It's kept the goats in. And it's done a good job. Now, I'm not a sponsored or anything by Premier One. I paid for this out of my own pocket. Um... But I'm really happy with how well it's actually worked all winter long. Hopefully as soon as we move this big metal carport and we move it back to the area that we cleared, uh, we'll be able to move this fence around and give them some fresh grass to be on. So this electric netting right here, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is snapping against the ground. It may be snapping against this limb just a little bit but it's still snapping. It's snapping on the ground. Fairly good. I can hear it in front of me. Yeah. So somewhere in here, it is snapping. Sometimes you can, in the dark, sometimes you can actually see the electricity. Um, but the way these electric nettings work is the horizontals are actually where it shocks you. These verticals are not electrified. And the very bottom wire, you can't, or one, you can't hardly see it, um, is actually black. You can't see it. It's back in here. And the very bottom one is not electrified. But sometimes you get leaves and stuff on the bottom. And you can walk up to this if you're brave enough. Since these verticals are not electrified, you can grab one and not get shocked. And then you can pull up on your fencing. Look, it's not snapping no more. Get the, get the leaves off of it, or the snow, in the wintertime. And then let it back down. And uh, that's only if you're brave enough. But that's how those fences work. It's only, at least the one I have, at least the one I own, it is only on the horizontals. So for being my first day off, I mean, it is a beautiful day out. So I'd say it's about 55 degrees out. So it's partly cloudy, so it's not really sunny out. It's got a nice little bit of a breeze. It's like 55 degrees. It is just, it is just wonderful outside. So the pond has been full of life here. We've got all our ducks are kind of spread around. We've had a couple herrings running around the pond, flying around. Uh, we've had some diving ducks. We've had some geese. There's just a lot of nature 
activity all coming alive. And it, you know, it's just springtime. Everything is green, and uh, it's just a nice day to finally get off, and, you know, get off work, have a day off, and, and enjoy the day out here. So I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, and I try to stay away from that on this channel. I try to just focus on the stuff that we're doing out here. Um, so I, I, me and Rebecca are very lucky that we still have our jobs right now, and um, I've seen a lot of guys get laid off in the last couple weeks. Uh, so I know there's a lot of people that are without jobs, a lot of people being sent home. They're at really uncertainty whether they'll get to go back to their job. Um, our son, one of our sons is one of those. He got laid off from his job. Uh, so I know these are hard times. There's a lot of stuff going on. And um, me and Rebecca are grateful that at least we are still healthy and we still have our jobs. So that being said, um, I think I'm going to pretty much end this video. I want to enjoy the day today. Now for the meat chickens, um, obviously we're going to come back here in a couple weeks and we're going to butcher those. So so we, over the next couple weeks, we will, you know, we're going to see us build a chicken tractor, get them out on pasture, and then when we go to butcher them, I'm going to show you guys the setup. I won't show you the butchering process or anything like that, but I will show you uh, what we have and how we're going to process them. We have a chicken plucker that is a homemade chicken plucker. I did not make it. I actually bought it off a guy, um, and it works really well for what it is. Um, so we'll show you all that here in a few weeks. Uh, the garden's coming up. Um, probably over the next four to five weeks, we will have the entire garden planted. And hopefully I'll get some extra time here um, to be able to get it fenced in and get a little bit more down there. So there's going to be a lot of gardening videos here coming up over the next few weeks. So now that I've got some extra time off, um, I will be able to get more videos out. So I do appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys all stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, show them what you can do. Okay, scout, scout, sit, sit, good boy. Okay, stay, oh, sit, sit, sit down, scout, sit, stay, stay. No, you're not, you're not gonna stay for me. You know, I'm too close. You know. Okay, sit. You're doing good, Sydney. Sit. Stay. Stay there. Okay. Oh, if as soon as I get down, you want to come over to me. Better get the mail while I'm up here. Uh-oh. I think it's about time I changed the cover on the mailbox. What do you think? So you see them goats being lazy. Now Dexter, he's actually up underneath there. He's actually right underneath there, back there laying under it. That's his place. <laughs>